Okay, so next up, let's try and specify uh, aesthetics that are gonna be passed to each geome. So previously we added in blue and we added in red to the different uh, geomes. Uh, now let's add in, go back to ggplot. We're gonna add in mpg as our data. A, uh, our aesthetics are going to be, x is gonna be our displacement. And then uh, y is gonna be our highways uh, miles per gallon. And then we're also going to add in color is going to be class. Now we've seen this particular piece before, geom point, and that gave us our uh, color uh, our color schemes. Now we're also going to add in geom smooth. Okay, and then we're going to set our standard error to false. And again, we're going to see uh, quite a few errors here, don't worry. Now this is going to give us a very colorful representation. Now each of our color segments are going to have their own smoothing line or their own trend line so we can see the differences between each of them. And from the previous um, uh, graphics that we saw before, this is there is definitely uh, each of these uh, classes has a much separate different trend line than the others. So now we can also add in and change things up just a little bit more. Okay, so let's move this class, and we're going to move that over to our AES, and that's going to be, we're changing that AES to our geom point, and then we're going to keep our smooth uh, smoothing function the same. And what we see now is instead of it splitting up the trend lines between each, we have a single trend line for the entire data set, not, uh, not for every specified point. Okay, so let's, we can go back and we can compare the two. Okay, so here, this one is with our, with our class, uh, our color classes inside of the main AES inside of the ggplot function. And then this one, this next one, is where we have uh, the, uh, the aesthetic inside of the geom point for our color scheme. Okay, so this, again, this changes from everything being mapped to just the points being mapped for color. Now we can also look at statistical transformations. Okay, and so let's go, let me, let me clear just a little bit more space here. And so if we look, if we kind of look here at ggplot, and we're gonna do mpg, as we're going to relook at our bar chart, uh, geom bar. Now this uh, this count isn't part of our data set, okay? From what we've seen before, but it is a statistical transformation that is automatically applied to our data because we're using the geom bar uh, uh, function. Now, in particular, though, we can actually count this out and we can do this ourselves. All right, so we can kind of do it by hand if we want. So let's do class count. And we're going to use uh, the dplyr package. We're going to use count and we're going to do M our data set mpg and we want to count class. Okay, and we see here that this is each of our counts individually uh, coming out as a table. We have Five two seaters, forty seven compacts, forty one midsize, eleven minivans, um, thirty three pickup trucks, thirty five subcompacts, and sixty two SUVs. Now we can also take that data that we created, and so this is going to be our uh, our class count data frame that we just created. We're grabbing our aesthetics. We want x is equal to class, y is going to equal count or not count, it's going to equal in, okay? Then we're going to add in geom bar, and we're going to say stat is equal to identity. So again, this is basically recreating our variables, but notice here now, instead of count, it says in. And again, we could always change that later on. But again, this is a way that you can make all of these charts by hand, or not by hand, but you can be have a little bit more control over them if you so chose. Now we can also uh, call this stat functions directly to add in additional layers. So uh, let's take for example, 
here let's um, let me clear this out and we'll do a okay so now we can actually uh, change this up just a little bit and let's uh, let's create a scatter plot for highway miles uh, for each displacement and then we're also going to use uh, the stat summary function to plot the mean highway miles at each displacement value so let's do ggplot mpg our aesthetics are going to be the displacement and our highway miles now we're going to add a geom point Okay, and we're going to make these the color, let's make them gray. Uh, we're also going to add a stat summary. And we're going to have uh, our function that we're going to be using is the mean. Our geome is going to be a line. Our size is going to be one. Uh, and our line Type, we want that to be dashed. And so again, we see here that we have, uh, just as what we had discussed, uh, we have our scatter plot of our highway and our displacement. And then we have a black dashed dotted line discussing the mean of highway miles at each displacement value. Now we can also change and ha uh, change our position adjustments for each of these sections. So let's uh, do another one. Now, uh, in addition to having our default statistical transformations, each geom has a built-in position adjustment. Now this specifies kind of the rules as to how different components should be positioned relative to each other. Now uh, this position is noticeable with the geom bar. So if we map out different, uh, a different variable to a color uh, visual characteristic, okay, and let's, so let's, let's actually take a look at this. Let's do ggplot mpg. Aesthetics is going to be, x is going to be our class. All right, and our fill is going to be the drive. And so we're going to do geom bar. Now geom bar by default uses a position adjustment called stack. Okay, and this makes each rectangle's height proportional to its value and stacks them on top of each other. Now we can also change that position argument. So let's do uh, set the position to equal dodge. And this sets the values right next to one another. And then we can also do uh, the positioning of fill, which actually gives it the its own percentage of the chart. Now, uh, I would suggest you guys take a look at the documentation uh, to see more uh, of the positioning arguments. Uh, next up, let's talk about managing uh, the scale of your data. We're going to be managing the scales. So whenever you specify aesthetic mappings in ggplot, it's going to use a particular scale to determine the range of values that the data should map to. So if we use our ggplot and our look, go back at our mpg data set, and again look at our displacement and our highway, and then let's make our colors going to be class, and our geom point. Again, this is going to automatically create our data visualization. Now we can have strict control over what we want so this again this is automatically scaling but we can take the same exact plot we can make the same exact plot by saying scale x continuous uh, plus scale y continuous and then we can also add scale color is discrete and this will give us actually the exact same uh, plot that we had before but again we are controlling the scale aesthetics and so we can actually you can actually look and do scale underscore and tab and again we see that there are tons of different scales and how how you can choose and change the properties by each of them 
Now, a continuous scale is going to handle things like uh, numeric data where things are continuous in nature, whereas a discrete, okay, such as what we had with our colors, uh, will handle things like colors, and since this is a, a small list of distinct colors. Now, we can also uh, look at the, the different types of default scalings, but maybe we want to change uh, the scale and replace those defaults with something else. So we can do ggplot and we can look at our mpg again. And now let's do x is equal to city, y is equal to highway. And let's look just at everything normally before we change things up. And if we notice here that we have our, our city and our highway and everything is, has this nice upward trend. But we can also change it and add in scale of x, and we want to reverse the scale plus the scale of y. We also want to reverse it as well. And this gives us just a little bit different visuals on the data. So again, here we notice now that our scales are starting at 35 and 40, and it has actually reversed our scaling. Now similarly, we can do things such as log or uh, and uh, square root okay of the different scalars and those are standard transformations that you will see later on in the course and you can always try those out by yourself as time goes on now you can also uh, do these to scale um, and format your axes so let me clear this out again so we can do ggplot bg s x is going to be our class uh, fill is going to be our drive and we want to add in a geom bar. Now we want our position to be fill. And then now what we're going to add is we're going to add in a scale of y continuous. And then we're going to add in breaks. Okay, so here we're going to create a sequence of 0 to 1, uh, and it's going to go up by 0.2. And then we're going to have the labels going to be, uh, we can use the scales format. Okay, so scales. And then we're going to grab by percent. Okay, and this changes things up just a little bit. And now we can also, and a very common thing, is to want to change the colors and control those colors. Okay, so while you can use the default coloring, which is very nice, you can also use predefined palettes, such as uh, going to uh, colorbrewer.org. And these have a very carefully designed look, and that makes them very viewable to uh, certain people, for, pe for example, people that have color blindness. Okay, now we can leverage these color brewer palettes using the scale color brewer function. Okay, and then we can pass in some palettes. So let's look at the default palette first. And so we're going to do our geom point. And then we're going to add in our scale uh, color brewer. And so notice uh, that this is going to be just a nice uh, uh, light, uh, light blue to dark blue scaling. However, if we want to add in a palette, we just use the palette key, uh, argument. And let's set this to set three. And so this, again, this is changing to a nice color palette. And again, we can change up to a variety of different other palettes. So let me just grab a random color palette. And we can take a look and see what it looks like. Again, so here there was no palette set six, but it's going to give us some unknown green palette. Uh, maybe let's try color palette two. And so again, you can see that this also changed it up. You can also choose uh, uh, to specify whether it's a continuous color variables to use a gradient, or you can also manually specify co uh, colors using uh, a named vector. So next, let's talk about uh, the coordinate system. 
And so our coordinate system, this is uh, our next term in our grammar of graphics, okay? As with scales, coordinate systems are specified with functions using the chord method, okay? This is going to add an additional layer. Now there are a number of different possible coordinate systems that we can use. So we have the uh, uh, Cartesian coordinate system, and this is specifying the X and Y values. This is also allows you to zoom in and out on your data. We have the uh, flip, okay, which is a Cartesian system where the X and Y are flipped. We have fixed, okay, which is a fixed aspect ratio. We have the polar for polar coordinates. And we have quick map, and this is a coordinate system that ap approximates a good aspect ratio for maps. So let's take a look at uh, using the Cartesian coordinate system. So we're going to go back to our MPG data set. Look at our AESX is going to be our displacement. Y is going to equal highway miles geom point. And then plus we're going to use the uh, uh, Cartesian coordinate. And we're going to set the X limit is going to be from 0 to 5. And what you'll notice here is that everything here kind of stretched out a little bit and again our max is at our 5 and then it goes up to and it has a little bit of extra in there. Now we can also flip our coordinates. Uh, and let's do actually, you know what, let's clear this out. And let's do a bar chart with flipped coordinates. Uh, plus geom bar and then we're going to do adding in a I'm going to do a coordinate flip and so this is actually very nice so if you instead of having the uh, vertical bars coming up and down now you can have horizontal bars going left to right and this uh, sometimes this is uh, a little bit more beneficial